co-parenting for separated parents. It can be a challenge when parents separate, especially if little ones are little ones. Toddlers, preschool age, maybe not quite old enough to fully have a conversation about it all with them, but not a baby or so young that they're very unaware of it all. It's, it's a challenging thing and it's a big change. So how can you co-parent effectively so that you're gonna get the best for your child? First of all, see if you can agree between the two of you um, what's best for your child, what rules you're gonna to stick to and follow, what boundaries you're gonna set. The, if you can agree, then you're most of the way there. The worst thing is when you're in conflict with each other and you're not in agreement because then the child is going to get mixed messages. Well, with mummy I can do this, but with daddy I can't. Or with daddy he lets me, but mummy says no. And there's no point trying to score points against each other, trying to be the favorite. It doesn't work. All it does is cause confusion and insecurity in the child. So we've got to think about putting the child first here. And if parents can put their differences aside and just come up with, it might take some compromising, but just come up with some standard rules that you can agree on together that you will adhere to for the best of your child. And that's the number one most important thing. Now, a toddler especially, um, but any, any age child, baby, school age child, you might notice more clinginess when parents first separate. And that's natural, they're clinging because they're like, if, especially if one parent has left the home and they're in the same house with the other parent, then they might feel a little insecure, like, oh, some, okay, somebody I know and love that's normally here has gone, what does this mean? And it might make them ultra clingy. And that's token standable. What can you do about it? Reassure, reassure, give that attention, give that reassurance. It doesn't mean that you have to be glued to your child, but what it does mean is that if they, if they are in need of a little extra attention, a little extra focus time, one-to-one, -one, then that can really, really help. Let them know that they're valued and let them know that you're right there and you're not going anywhere. But you have to show that. You can't just say that. You have to show it. And spending that close one-to-one -one time is going to be the best way. On the agreeing the rules kind of thing, um, to take that to another level, my next step for you is um, about having the same routine, especially around bedtime, but having the same routine with either parent. So whether they are um, at home with mummy or at daddy's house or wherever they may be, that the same routine is followed. So if bedtime, for instance, looks like um, going upstairs at 6.30, having a bath or a wash of some kind, um, brushing teeth, putting on pyjamas, having a bedtime story and getting into bed, lights out by seven. If that's the routine in one home, it needs to be the same routine when they're with the other parent. It's no good if that's routine at home and then when they stay at the other parent's house, um, they're just allowed to watch TV till nine o'clock at night. So it's just not gonna be good for that child's well-being, for their behavior and for the effects. They've got to cope and learn to understand and, and deal with this change. And actually these little things that you might not think are relevant are actually really gonna help them with dealing with that change because it gives them that stability and that consistency irrespective of who they're with. And them feeling that is going to add to that sense of complete rather than where, which camp am I in. So give them that sense of stability. Those rules and boundaries that you set, so for instance, if they are allowed um, to have ice cream after dinner on a Friday, <laughs> if that's the rule you have, then let that be the rule in both homes. If there's a boundary, for instance, they are, oh, let's think of a boundary here. If they're not allowed to get up before 6.30 in the morning and you have a rule like that, then have that rule and that boundary with both parents or you know, in, in whichever scenario they're in. Um, again, all creates security in the child. It's the same in you know, a complete family or living together. This is exactly the same rule you know, would apply there as it would for separated parents. But when parents are separated, I just think you need to add that 
added level of focus on these things because it's far easier for those things to slip or drift or just not be aware of them because they are happening in two separate environments. Whereas at home, you know, you kind of got better eyes on it and awareness of it if you're all in one home. Um, but it's gonna give that child more security as well in the same sense that if one parent, solo parent even, um, says, no, you can't sleep in my bed, no, 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 no. Oh, do you know what, today you can, go on then. You know, it's the same as that intermittent reinforcement that that's just teaching the child that you're a wavering, unstable, changey-mindy type of person. But if you give that child the sense that, no, you're solid, you, you set your, your rules and you stick to them, whether they like them or not, they will respect you and actually feel more secure because they know where they stand with you. And that rule applies in every scenario, but like I say, more focus needed if parents are separated. And the final thought I have for you on this today is don't overcompensate due to guilt. Just because you're probably having feelings of guilt that have I done wrong by my child? Is this, you know, my poor child is suffering as a consequence of our not being able to be together anymore. Um, you know, you're bound to, we all would naturally have certain amounts of feelings like that. And those are your feelings and your emotions and you can work on those and you can process those. But what I want to focus on here is don't project your feelings of, of guilt, if, that, if that's what you want to call it, onto the way you parent your child by overcompensating, over molly coddling um, and letting things go that you wouldn't normally. So yes, have extra cuddles and close time, have extra one-to-one -one focused attentive time with your child absolutely do those things as a positive but not as a reactive thing so just because um, if your child does something or misbehaves in a certain way or isn't complying with what normally they would don't just let things slide and let them off the hook is what I'm saying purely because of this happening in their lives you can approach it kindly and you can deal with the situation effectively. It doesn't have to be a, a blow up, but what I'm saying here is just not to just let things all go because of your feelings of guilt, because all that will do is create a monster. <laughs> and it's the, it's the same kind of thing with bereavement and other disruptive things in a child's life. Just because something big happens doesn't mean that you suddenly throw out every rule they've ever had because you feel sorry for them. Um, they need stability and they need certainty and that's something you can give them by showing them very kindly that you have got their best interests at heart and clear boundaries in place for them. If you can both do that as parents that separate for your child and come together and actually discuss the fact that, hey look, I don't really like this and I know you don't either, but this is what's best for our child and it's the least we can do for them. We owe our child this much, can we do this together? then I can't imagine any parent that wouldn't want to do the best thing for their child. So I hope these top tips help you with co-parenting in a separated parent scenario and all the best to you and your family.